Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. We're in the garage. Got a little project I'm just about to start. Based on a 32-inch, uh, well, it's a television. It could be a computer monitor, uh, but I happen to have a 32-inch uh, color telly available with HDMI port. So I'm going to use that. Link to a Raspberry Pi and all these other bits and pieces, which will come clear as the video goes on. I'm an Apple fanboy and we've got uh, Apple phones which will link together, iPhones link together calendars of the family. But I want to go one stage further and that's actually displayed on a notice board available inside the house. But not just calendars, other events such as uh, travel time to work, um, photo albums, weather, etc, etc. I've had a look online just to see if anybody actually makes the built assembly, just to get some ideas really from them. And there's a company called DACboard.com. They build ready, uh, ready to sort of hang on your wall assemblies in 24 inch and 32 inch size screens. Uh, and there's a subscription service with them. This ranges from zero pounds or zero dollars up to $30 a month, which is really a business style package. But what that board also um, allow you to get hold of is simply the software. So with the use of a Raspberry Pi and a few bits and pieces and a cable here and there, you can build your own equivalent to the DAC board at home, a little bit cheaper than the ready built one. And you know, I like to make things rather than buy it. So that's what we're planning on doing. But a, a little bit of an overview of the DAC board software, there'll be a few bits appearing on the screen now. But basically, you can turn your monitor here into either an electronic calendar, a smart home dashboard, uh, just a photo frame if you wanted, electronic photo frame, uh, media library access, really, really good. The integration that DAC board offer is tremendous. That You have API access, RSS feeds. Um, one thing with DAC board as well, they will take on board any ideas and possibly put it into action for you. Uh, so that, that's something to bear in mind. If there's an idea you've got that's not available from their extensive uh, library of add-ons, then um, yeah, give them a, uh, drop them a line and they'll certainly try to put something uh, forward for you. You can mount this landscape or portrait. We're actually going to go landscape with it because I've also got a CCTV system. Uh, so this will double not only for uh, calendars, etc., but also for the ongoing CCTV monitoring. So, as I say, it'll all become clear, um, but what I'll do first, we've got a wooden frame we've got to build. There's some scrap wood going on there and some new wood. I want to build a frame around this so I can hang it on the wall, a bit like a picture frame. Granted, it's going to be a bit chunky, but yeah, we're going to mount that on the wall, but I'm going to turn it over now. Uh, it's got the standard, I think it's Visa uh, connector on the back, the hundred, not the connector, uh, the, the mountain assembly, 100 mil, 200 mil, etc. So I'm going to turn that over. We'll make a plate up so it's ready to hang on the wall after I've built the wooden frame. But I'm going to start with that. So yeah, well, let's get mo moving. I'll put those in a box, all those bits and pieces, and we'll turn it over and see what I've got to measure up. Should be fairly simple to start with. Then after that, I'm going to proceed on to build the wooden frame. We're going to rub down the old varnish on there, and we're going to stain it antique pine, I believe the colour is. Uh, then we'll move on to the electronics. There's a little bit of switching going on. There's a... An encoder sitting in there and a few bits and bobs uh, so I can switch over without the remote control of the TV uh, to the camera system or the calendar system depending on what I want to look at at the time so yeah there's some electronics going to come at the end of probably two videos so that's what we'll do now though stop talking turn that over let's uh, get a mountain made right there we flip the monitor over Here's the back these are the mountains pretty standard on most monitors or TVs now Four holes. This looks like 200 mil spacings, and it is. This is a 200 by 200. I know they do 100 by 100. So all I'm going to plan on doing, I think, only a thin bit of alley here, uh, is place that there. That'll cover the four holes, which is fine. I'll cut the top off along here, and put a hole in it. Something as simple as that. So it's like a hanging bracket for it. Uh, this is going to be mounted on a stud wall in the kitchen. So you imagine the stud wall um, has got wooden beams behind the plasterboard running here. What I'm going to do is have another scrap bit of aluminium, cut it to the right length so it catches the beams, and just put a bolt sticking out of it. So 
So this would be mounted on the wall with a bolt sticking out uh, and the TV would hang off it, just like a picture frame really. So what we'll do, we'll mark this up. Should be dead easy to cut to be honest. Four holes, a little bit of this angly going on here. And a hole in there, a hole in either end mounted on the wall and job's a good one. Let's get on with it. Right, I've had a little measure up and I'll need a strip of aluminium to mount on the studs, about 480 millimetres long. So I'm going to use the old Axminster band saw. I wish I bought this years ago. Uh, I won't use it every day, but it gets more and more use. It really does. So I'm very happy with it. I'll put a link in the description to it, but we'll let us do its work. There's lots of other ways of cutting this with angle grinder, uh, et cetera, et cetera, plain hacksaw. But this will do it fairly squarely, quietly, and I can drink my tea while it's doing it. go let's do the other side again we ain't got to be super accurate it's just about 480 everywhere it's different depending on your application you might want to mount this on a desk Right, that's that done. Right, that's all knocked up together now. Four holes in there, plus a couple of spares They uh, from previous project. But yeah, they all line up on the back, 200 mil centers. I've put a hole in the top. That's where effectively it's gonna hang from this bracket. Put a bolt through there. So effectively you bring the screen up and it'll hang off the bolt. So you got a little bit of wibble wobble. I won't, this hole was already in here incidentally. Uh, but I won't finalise a hole. I don't want to put the hole in the middle in case we've got to offset the screen slightly. So we'll do that before we finally fit it. But ultimately, that's the hanger done. So we put that on one side. And I think what we'll do, as I said earlier, we'll crack on with the wood surround here. So we'll do that now. Right, I'm going to tidy up a couple of bits of the wood I got. Now I've measured the telly. And the frame is 12 mil on three sides. The bottom edge is 22 mil. Bound to be something a little bit different. So 
whilst that's not going to make a difference to the outside frame, what I intend to do is have a piece of wood on the outside frame as a lip, if you like, that's just going to come in over this, um, well, framework of the telly. Uh, so I don't want to see one side bigger than the other. I want it like equidistant all the way around the frame. So what I'm going to have to do is offset the TV a little bit in this frame, which shouldn't be a problem. It's just a couple of packer pieces and a little bit of uh, hopefully relatively accurate measurements. But because I want to put a frame on the top of this or lip, uh, this is already radiused. Now, that's not going to be any good if I'm going to put a strip of wood on the top. So what I've got to do is just shave the minimum amount off these pieces of wood in the table saw there. Then we can do a few mitre joints. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna say try to get clever. I want to cut this 45 degrees very accurately, but I also want to cut another slot in each of the two pieces where they join here and put a biscuit joint in. Uh, a full length biscuit joint so that's going to be new to me so we'll see how we get on with that but yeah I'll just slither a couple of bits off here and do a few mitres That's all I wanted to do, just clean the top off. So I've got a lovely square edge there now. And on top of that, there'll be that um, lip that'll come in and cover part of the telly surround up. So yeah, I'll do a few mitres now, 45 degrees, how we get on with that. Right, I need to set this blade to 45 degrees. I'm using a digital level box. I've done a previous video on this and it does a pretty accurate um, setup for what I need. But there is, I can go one step further with it. But let me show you this first. Zero that out on the bed. I've got to be careful I don't rock the table saw. Because all I'm looking to is zero this relative to the saw blade. Doesn't matter if this table saw bed is at an angle, if the floor's off, for instance. It's a relativity between this deck and the blade. So zero degrees. Stick this on the blade, it's magnetic, all lovely. And we go 45 degrees. Let me just try to lock that off, bear with me a second. fluttering around a little bit. I have learned there is an adjustment on this table for a, a, an end stop of 45 degrees, which I didn't know about. So I've adjusted that slightly. I may have to tweak it just a tad more. 45.1, right. Probably good enough, but if it's not, well, we're gonna fine tune it now. So I'm gonna run a mitre through 45 degrees. Then we're gonna double check the mitre itself the 445 degrees. We may need to tweak this just a fraction, but we're in the right ballpark. So let's do one mitre and have a little measure. Right, let's cut the mitre. I have set this to 90 degrees relative to the blade before I've tipped the blade over. So we got, it should be square going in and we should have an approximate 45 degrees there. So let's fire it up and see what we got.
Right, let's check the 45 degree angle. <clears throat> I bought these specially for this job. Uh, made by Presk, if that's how you want to pronounce it, German. Uh, set it to Amazon, of course. I'll put links in the description. They seem very, very nice, very accurate. Um, and fairly well made as well. well. Let me show you how I'm going to check the 45 degree anyhow. I've got a, an engineer's square there. I'm, I've took the rule out of this square. I'm just going to hold that there. And I'm going to slide the wood in. And from my angle, that looks horrible. There's a big gap down here. So I need to fine tune the miter to get it bang on 45 degrees. So if I have carried on cutting like this, I'm not going to have a rectangular box like I was aiming for. Now you don't need both squares. Let me just take that out of the way. Could just go for the square as it is with the rule in it. Same job, assuming you can trust this for accuracy. And there's no reason for me not to think so. So draw that up and we've still got the same gap. To me, it looks identical to the other square. So I, they're either both wrong or they're both right. I'm hoping they're both right. So I need to trim a little bit more off. I'll adjust the blade and we'll come back. And I'll just show you how uh, more accurate it is. When I say more accurate, I mean more accurate doing it this way than trying to read the dial on the saw table. As it is, this saw table does the job, but it's not for furniture maker. It, Mike in the garage is fine, but yeah, I'm not going to make any fine furniture with it. But I'll have a tweak and I'll show you how, how much better I can get it. I'll show you just with the square as it is. To my eye, that's bang on. I'll get the other square. We could do it like I did before with the two squares. Just see if we get different results. Bear with me. Here we go. Just clearing a bit of space. There we go, everything's sitting square. And to my eye, again, that's bang on. If you move this around a little bit, you obviously get different angles, different results, but with everything locked in there, I'm holding it, I could do it with another hand, but to my mind, that's bang on. Certainly, what I'm making here, that's accurate enough. Now, it wouldn't have been if I hadn't adjusted the saw blade. Let me just, take it over to the saw. I didn't know this until today. This adjustment here, there's a screw adjustment there and here. That'll set you 90 degree and that's set you 45 and that's what I've done now. So in theory I should be able to rotate the blade to 90 without a problem straight back to 45. Need to check it though, always recheck it. But yeah I didn't know that so hey there you go. Right let's carry on with the other miters. Right, there you go. There's a mitre cut with a slot in there to take a biscuit. Now, this is just a scrap bit of wood, but the idea is obviously a mitre will glue together. You'll put a biscuit in here to give you that extra strength. So the next thing to do on the side, this is an upright. This is a side panel for the TV. I want to drill a hole on the side, very similar to this, which is a bit of a demo for myself to make sure I know what I was doing there. And that's to fit a rotary encoder in. And there's one I prepared earlier. It's going to go about into the center of the upright. And it's a simple rotary encoder, very cheap. Um, I think about £10 a box or 10 from Amazon. I'll put links in, of course. But basically got a rotary encoder and a push switch. And it'll all become apparent when we move on to the electronics. But what I'll do now, I'll mark up the side panel and replicate this in it. Then we can glue it together couple extra strips I've got to make to go on the inside to support the television and to keep it square in the wood and the front panel I need to put on uh, like an edging strip to go all the way around but I mentioned that earlier so once all that's done we'll move over to the electronics all right it's nice and simple I'm going to drill a pilot hole through there 
turn it over, go 20 mil with a force and a bit, turn it back over and run a seven mil drill through for the spindle to be able to fit up into the woodwork. So that's what we'll do now. These Forstner bits are really, really good. They remove a lot of material very quickly and accurately. They give you a really good finish around here and it's a square bottom in the wood, wood assembly there, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'll see if I can find some on Amazon. I don't think I bought mine from Amazon, but nevertheless, I'm sure they'll sell them. If not, I'll link in somewhere else. But they weren't a lot of money and there was a big set I had, so uh, very pleased with that. Anyway, last hole now for the spindle. go a little bit of cleaning up a little bit offset because this is a front of the screen and we're going to have 15 mil of wood surround going around so this will end up being about in the middle so yeah that's good right i'll glue this up off shot uh we'll come back and i've got to make some little spacer pieces to go around but that we'll do that after the glue's gone off well i'm glad to say the frame glued up okay everything's 90 degrees so that's good I've cut the pack of pieces. This is what I said was going to centralize the television because the frame is 12 mil on three sides and 22 on the bottom. So hopefully this will equalize it in the frame, so to speak. So just a couple of staples or nails, in fact, little brads, just to keep this in place. Right, that's all that needs. I've done this side already. The bottom doesn't need one because that's where the TV is wider. So what I'll do, I'll place the TV in here now. Well, in fact, you can see it. Bear with me, it's only over here. Now it should fit in without much wibble wobble, which is exactly what I wanted to do. What I'll do while it's this way round, I obviously don't want the TV to fall out of the frame, so I've got to come up with some brackets, probably removable brackets, because I may want to take it in and out. Uh, because the bezel, if you want to call it that, that I'm going to fit around the front of this, 
is going to stop the TV falling onto the floor in a forward direction. So um, yeah, it wanted to be something removable. Probably it could end up just with metal brackets, but I'll have a little think. When I've sorted it, I'll come back. You can see what I'm up to. Right, didn't have to think too long. A couple of right angle brackets trimmed. Bit of furry Velcro on there just so it touches the telly and it, it don't rub too much. There's one on the left hand side, one's going to go on the right. Screw that in and that should trap the telly between the front bezel I'm going to fit in a few minutes. So, and remember the TV's hanging from a wall by a bracket I've made on the back earlier. So really all, all these are doing is supporting the framework on the TV. So they're absolutely fine. So that's good. We'll flip it over now I've got that sorted and we'll start with the front bezel. Want to minimize the edge where it touches the telly. So we're going to do a little bit of a bevel on there. So yep, yeah, we'll flip it over and see what we can do next. Right, a little bit of sawing on the table saw. I've just cut the very small amount off this edge, about halfway through the wood, uh, beveled it or tapered it off to make it a little bit thinner on the edge where it meets a screen. It makes it look quite good, I think. It sort of thins it down a tad. I quite like the look of it. I've kept it back uh, uh, about 10 mil all the way round on the surround on the TV itself. I was going to bring it right to the edge, but it looked a little bit thick, so I've kept it back a tad. So what I need to do now, give this a little bit of a clean up, pop the screen out. I'm going to glue and staple the wooden surround into this. Uh, then a final rub down and I'm going to use some coloured varnish. So um, we'll get on and do that now. I was going to use a staple gun, but I've had a little practice on the same sort of wood that I'm going to be nailing through and into. And although it's on the same pressure or power setting, it's inconsistent and it's damaging the wood quite badly there. Or it's not even going below the wood surface and it's leaving sort of a square head. And these are steel pins that are going in, steel nails. So what I'm going to do... I've got some copper nails, genuine, genuine copper nails here. So I'm going to whack a few of them in. I'll leave the head flush with the surface so I can decide in a minute after I've sanded it whether I want that exposed or whether I'm going to bang it in a little bit more and fill it. So uh, we'll decide. But at the moment now, what I'm going to do is actually go and glue and nail these on. So uh, that's what you'll see me doing now. Let's find a hammer. Right, that looks okay. I think what I'm going to do is leave the nails flush with the surface because they they look good. Copper nails, we're going to have antique um, oak colour varnish around on it. So um, I'll carry on with cleaning up. I'll recess, well, I won't recess them. I'll, I'll nail these in flush, turn it over, clean the glue off there. Then I'll varnish it, probably uh, give it 24 hours for the glue to fully go off, give it a sand and a varnish. So I'm probably going to end the video here because we're pretty much done with the woodwork and we've got to go over to the electronics. Now with the electronics, I'm waiting for PCB to turn up from China. So as soon as that turns up, you'll see the second video um, online. So keep a lookout for that. But anyhow, thanks for watching so far and uh, hope you join me on the second video.